Hey everyone, thanks for joining me today. We're going to take another look at some PowerShell basics. Before we start, we'll just create an icon on our desktop for the PowerShell ISE environment that I described in my previous video. And we'll be using the PowerShell ISE environment to enter our commands and run our, our short scripts. So we'll go to the start menu, we type in ISE, PowerShell ISE comes up along with our recent files that we've been using. We can expand that. If we open the file location, we'll see PowerShell ISE. We can right click, create a copy, and we'll right click and paste a shortcut on our desktop. And now we can just double click the PowerShell ISE icon. So we'll open PowerShell ISE. So we'll look today at some of the basic fundamental commands we might enter into PowerShell. So first of all, again in my previous video I covered how to use PowerShell ISE. In the bottom part of the window we'll type our command. So we'll type in as an example hello and it comes up and says the term hello is not recognized as the name of a commandlet, a function, a script file or an operable program. In other words, it's trying to do something with the word hello. It's expecting the word hello to be a command. So what we need to do before we type in the word hello, we need to issue a command. How do we output hello? And how we're going to do that is with a simple command called write host. So if I type in write host, I can open a set of double quotations and write in hello. And sure enough, it returns hello. Now, of course, we've also got a little bit of a messy screen above where we've got the error from previously. So what we'll actually do, we'll write it as a little script. We'll start at the top and we'll write in clear as our first line in the script. And I think that's self-explanatory. It's going to clear the screen. So all of the stuff that's on there at the moment will go away. We'll type in our write host command again and we'll put in hello world. We can also write a command with write host in which we use single quotations. So if we type in this is an example with single quotations, you'll see that it will run that as well. And I'll explain the difference between using double quotations and single quotations shortly. However, for the moment, single quotations and double quotations can be used when you're typing simple text. So let's run that. We'll click the run button and sure enough, hello world. And this is an example with single quotations. Now, let's say, for example, we want to have all of that on one line. We can do that by adding some parameters, some switches. So what we're going to do is after the phrase hello world, we're going to put a space, then the hyphen, and you can see there's a number of options available to us. And we're going to choose the no new line option. Now when we run the script, we should see that hello world, and this is an example with single quotations, remain on the same line. Let's try that again. And again, because we have the clear command, we're going to get a nice clear screen. It's not going to appear underneath what we've already typed. And sure enough, hello world, this is an example with single quotations. However, we're missing a space, so we can put that at the end of hello world or at the front of this is an example. Now we can do a couple of other clever things as well. We might want the foreground colour to be green. Let's just see what happens when we run it this time. Hello world in green. This is an example of single quotations. Let's change the foreground colour of the second part to magenta. And there we go. So some fairly simple things that we can do, but actually quite useful when you're running a script. Perhaps you want to draw someone's attention to a part of the script, or perhaps you want to use green to identify when something has worked, and red to identify when there's an error. And again, we'll go on to some of the more advanced functions and features at another time. Now, how did I know that right host would have the option of allowing me to select there being no new line and also a foreground colour? And I should also say also a background colour. If I change the background colour to white and run that, you can see we've now highlighted the text with a white background. But how did I know that all of these different things existed? Well, one of the things, if you find a useful command, 
you can always type in get help and then the command. So if we type in write host, I'll just expand this screen, we can see that the write host command has a syntax of write host and then the object that we want, so that would be the, the text. We can choose obviously a foreground colour with these various foreground colours and of course also a background colour with the various background colours. Now I'm not going to go into all of the details on all of the commands that I run but I'll, I'll take you through some of the most common things that you might do with them and in this example with write host the more common things you might do is to put a no new line and a, a foreground possibly a, a background colour. And if you'd like to know a little bit more about a particular command perhaps go to Google and search to see what you can do with a particular command. Maybe search for the phrase PowerShell, write host, and then the word syntax. The word alias, uh, or aliases, will tell you what you can use instead of that specific command. So instead of typing write host, could I use something else? Well, in this particular example, no. If I were to look at get help for get child item, I mentioned this in the previous video, that get child item has aliases of GCI, which is a short version of get child item, DIR, which was the pre-PowerShell Windows and DOS environment command to list a directory, and ls, which is more commonly used in Linux and Unix. So let's see what happens if we do a get help and get children. And there we go, there's our aliases there. Now again, there's some interesting things here. With get children, we can specify a path. We can specify things like um, to specifically include something or to specifically exclude something. Recurse will be something that we will often use and force will allow us to look through and also include hidden files that would otherwise not be seen. You can also choose to search for specifically directories or specifically files. So let's try and run a get child item command and we'll select some of the, the common things we might do with that. So we'll clear the screen, again we'll just type in the word clear. We'll leave our write host stuff there, however we don't really want that to run when we're running our get child item, we might want to bring it back into our script later. So one of the things we can do is mark it out for being a remark. Now if I type in a hashtag symbol, also known as the pound sign, also known as the octothought, you can see that the text turns green after the hashtag and again if I do it on the next line immediately it turns green so the green means treat this as a remark don't actually run anything and we can demonstrate this if I type in right host hello YouTube and run this the two commands of hello world and this is an example won't run and there we go we've cleared the screen and we've written hello YouTube We'll type in a get child item command and we're going to get the child item C windows and we should encapsulate that within quotations. So now we can run get child item and we'll point that to windows and we can see we get a big long list. So what we could do is we could count how many items are there. What we can do is encapsulate the command get child item C windows in brackets and we can now apply additional parameters, filters to the, the information that we've typed in. So again if I type in a dot you can see all of the, the ones that are available and all of this information is available by googling online or, or looking at the get help. Commonly we might want things like the full name and this was shown in the previous video. If I run that we can see we get the contents with the full name. I mentioned that we maybe wanted to count how many items are there so let's do that and we've got 109 items. Let's take off count. We can run things with the, the brackets being in place. We don't need to have anything appended to it and it will just run as normal. But let's say for example we want to look at only the directories we can type in hyphen directory. Now let's run it. Well, I don't know, is that the same number as before? Let's try it with file. Well, they look like files to me, and the other ones look like directories. How many have we got of each? I don't know. One of the things we could do is count them up. So we'll count them 
with everything, get child item, see windows, and we'll count. Let's run that. There's 109 items. Let's have a look to see how many there are directories. There's 77. We can also do clever things like type 109 minus 77, and it'll tell us there's 32. So I'm expecting when we run this as file and do a count, we'll get 32. And sure enough, there's 32. Are there any hidden ones at all? Let's type in force and we'll get the hidden ones as well. There are, there's one hidden one, so we've got 33. We could also type in hidden and we'll see only the hidden ones and we've got one. And of course, if we want to see what that is, we can remove the word count. The other thing we could do, of course, we talked about the hashtag symbol making everything to the right of it a remark or a comment. If we type in a hashtag there, it's still there if we want to remove it and have a look, but for the moment it's not going to run. So if we run the command as is, we should see all of the files in C windows which are hidden. And there we go. And you can see the mode over here of the attributes, so it's an archive file, it's read only, and it's a hidden file. And it's a file called the Windows Shell Manifest. So we've seen how to use some simple commands, get child item and write host and output some simple information on screen. But how can we make that more useful? So what we can do is we can output exactly how many of each type of object there are. So a really simple thing would be to say, we'll do the, the count there, we'll copy that line, we'll copy it so that we've got four copies of it. And what we're going to do is we're going to do directory and directory and we're going to take off the hidden ones in the bottom two. So what we're actually going to do, we're going to do four types of count. We're going to say how many files there are that are hidden in the directory, how many directories that are hidden, how many files are visible and how many directories are always visible. So if we run that as it is, we'll just get some fairly meaningless numbers. We can then use our examples of above where we've typed in our write host commands and we can take that and we can put that here and say write host and we'll change the text to there are and a space, no new line and then we're going to have a number as to how many hidden files there are and we're going to then write the phrase hidden files and we'll change the foreground color to cyan which is a light blue and we'll copy that several times so we'll just move that down there change that one to magenta that one to yellow and that one to green and we'll change the text to say hidden directories visible files visible directories so let's run that now and somewhere I've made an error okay I'd forgotten to um, comment out or remove the initial foreground colour green after I'd cut the right host information earlier. It will tell us where the error is, so it tells us it's line 2 character 1, so sure enough line 2 character 1 it's just a hyphen, um, it's saying I, I don't really understand what that is, you've not given me any context for it, so we'll just remove that. We don't need to run the script again to see that the no new line is being observed where we type in there are and then a certain number but then not observed after that and that's because the get child item command doesn't have the no new line parameter so if I type in no new line it's, it's come up with an error it doesn't understand what I'm asking it for there's something else we could do and that is if we encapsulate the entire command in brackets and actually write that output as a write host command, we can then invoke the no new line. Let's try that. And sure enough, where we've done that, we've got, there are four hidden directories. So let's update our script so it reflects that. And also, let's put a space between each of the 
output. So we'll finish off with a write host command for each of our output. There we go, that's the output that we wanted. So let's expand the scripts view. We've now got quite a lot of text. So how can we make that perhaps tidier? How can we make it so that it's more versatile? Well, one of the other things I'd like to introduce you to is variables. Variables are elements of our scripts that can, as the word describes, vary. So for example, the path that I specified four times as C Windows, we could turn that into a variable and you'll see why that's useful. So say I want to change C Windows to C Windows System 32. I can go through and for each one I can say System32 slash System32 and so on and so forth. But a quicker way to do it and an easier way and a more efficient way would be to create a variable and we do that by putting a dollar there. So what we're going to do is we're going to give it a meaningful name for us so we understand what it is. So we'll call it path to count files and folders. It's a little bit long-winded but that's absolutely fine and we're going to say that, that variable is equal to C Windows System 32. And we're going to go into our get child item command and we're going to change that to path count files and folders and we're going to do that to each of the ones that we've typed in so far. Now if we run it we'll see what's available in system 32 and we can quickly change that to C Windows. So again let's let's try and make this a little bit more versatile. Um, I've changed my mind we're going to get rid of those right hosts it's all very well saying there's one hidden file, hidden directory, so on and so forth, but it's, a, it's still a little bit meaningless. So let's say there are however many hidden files in, and then we're going to specify path to count files and folders. So let's do that to all of them as well. And run the script again. There we go. Now it's looking to be a little bit more useful, a little bit more versatile. And of course, if I now change that to C program files, it's one of the hidden files in C program files, 43 visible directories. So a really useful way of querying our system. And all we need to do each time is change the variable that we created, path to files and folders. I mentioned at one point that we could switch between double quotation marks and single quotation marks, and really where it makes the biggest difference is where you're using variable names. So if I change the second one, the hidden directories, to a single quotation, you might not immediately notice anything different. But if I run that command, we can now see that the second line, the one that we changed, there's three hidden directories in path count files and folders. And the reason is, in a single quotation, we're actually explicitly outputting what we've written. When it's a double quotation, we can mix and match between our written text and our variables. Hence, in the earlier examples, we were able to see that we could simply type the variable in alongside our write host for what's visible or hidden and it would output the path name as well. So hopefully you found that useful. So I think I'll leave it there for today. I'll save this script so we can come back to it next time. But for now, if you enjoyed this video, please give me a like. And if you'd like to see more, please click subscribe. And if there's anything you'd like to specifically see, please add it to the comments and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.